Om Sri Sai Ram, offering my most humble and loving salutations at the divine lotus feet of our beloved and most beautiful Lord, Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba. Beloved Swami, respected elders, dear brothers and sisters, loving Sai Rams uh, to all of you, please accept the most loving welcome to each and every one of you to this North American town hall meeting. Now, of course, extended uh, to all devotees around the globe. At the outset, we pray that you and your families are well, blessed, and healthy by Swami's infinite grace. Before we get started, I would like to call upon the USA National Devotional Coordinator, Mr. Srikant Vaidyanathan, to lead us in prayer. Brother Srikant. Oh. Oh, oh. Prayer written by Bhagwan. O oh Lord, take my love and let it flow in fullness of devotion to Thee. O oh Lord, take my hands and let them work incessantly for Thee. O oh Lord, take my soul and let it be merged in one with Thee. O oh Lord, take my mind and thoughts and let them be in tune with Thee. O oh Lord, take my everything and let me be an instrument to work for Thee. Sairam. Sairam Balasikant, thank you so much. Now we will get started with this meeting. Uh, the purpose of this meeting, of course, as stated in the invitation, is to clarify the position of the Sri Satya Sai International Organization and answer as many questions as possible regarding the Global Council matter. The meeting will start with a brief presentation by, by our SSIO senior leaders, and it will be followed by a question and answer session Please feel free to send as many questions as you may have via the chat uh, function of Zoom. Now, in addition to our esteemed panelists here today, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of members of the Prashanti Council, the chairman of Zone 1 SSSIO, Dr. Phil Goslin, the USA National Council President, Mr. Harish Naidu, and the National Council President of Canada, SSSIO, Mr. Shiva Nataraja, in addition to many senior SSSIO leaders from around North America and around the globe. Now, without further ado, I would like to invite Dr. Narendranath Reddy, Chairman of the Prashanti Council, to open this town hall meeting. Dr. Reddy is a fourth generation, generation follower of Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba and came to Swami at the tender age of five. After decades of service at the Divine Lotus Feet, in 2003, Bhagavan appointed Dr. Reddy as a member of the Prashanti Council, and subsequently, in 2006, as a director to the Sri Satya Sai World Foundation. Welcome, Dr. Reddy. With love, reverence, gratitude, and humility, I offer my prayerful pranams at the Divine Lotus Feet of our dearest, sweetest and loving Lord Bhagavan Sri Sat Sai Baba. Dear brothers and sisters, loving Sai Ram to all of you for sparing your valuable time. I know you are doing this because of your love for Swami and your dedication and love for his uh, divine uh, mission. Actually, all of us are blessed and fortunate to be the contemporaries of this Kali Yuga avatar, the Purna avatar, Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba, who has given us four wonderful gifts, which number one, his sweet divine name, Om Sri Sai Ram, chanting which our life is redeemed. And he has shown his beautiful divine form, contemplating which our life is sanctified. And we have the wonderful nectarine, his divine Leela sports, thinking about which 
we go into rapture and bliss. And the fourth gift is the Satya Sai organization. Because historically in the lifetime of an avatar, never it has happened. Most of the missions like a Christian mission happened many uh, decades after the Lord Jesus, same thing with Buddhist mission and many others. But here, during the lifetime of Avatar, Swami gave us this precious gift of Sri Satya Sai International Organization. Swami doesn't need an organization. It is his gift for us so that we realize our innate divinity through this platform and share our joy and love with our fellow beings and in serve the uh, society and communities where we live in. After Swami declared his avatarhood, so people devotees from all over India, they started going to Swami in Prashantinalayam and subsequently devotees from all over the world. And there was no specific organization, people from Australia, USA, UK, Canada, all over the people started going. Then they felt there is a need for an organization. So in 1965, actually the, one of the first countries, Sri Lanka requested Swami and Swami blessed to start the organization. Subsequently, it went on. The, it started in the USA where Mrs. Cohen Swami himself has written a letter, which we'll show you later on, and started in uh, Kenya, in um, East Africa, Uganda, Tanzania, and many parts of the world, Australia. So the growth started by his grace, even though Swami never went to any other countries other than East Africa in 1968, it went on increasing. So there is Swami's divine will, he is gift to the humanity. So then Swami felt he used to personally guide, you know, this organization, is founded, nurtured, and guided by Bhagawan at all the times. And there are many stalwarts like Dr. Hislap, Mrs. L.C. Coban, Howard Muffet, many great devotees around the world. I can't go on enumerating many, many people who have received personal guidance how this organization should be run in various parts of the world. In 1965, as I said, started with Sri Lanka and it went on expanding to the other countries. Then Swami personally used to guide all of them, but it became so much and Swami wanted to give opportunities to the other senior leaders to guide these people. So in 1975, Swami formed the World Council and he himself appointed the members for the World Council around the world. So, this continued and Swami used to give many discourses how an organization should run about the basic how uh, spiritual values, how gender separation, no solicitation of funds. Swami laid down many guidelines which all of you are familiar with. Then this went on momentum, so many countries joined. So Swami in 1987 dissolved the World Council. So you can see that where he said it served its purpose, Swami goes on, because now it has become so much in each country, now they can manage themselves because there are many countries with different law of the land, different culture, different ethnicity, different religious background, like you see for people from China, people from Russia, Middle East countries. So they know that, so they, their countries can manage themselves with the given guidelines from Swami and these le leaders. So subsequently this continued with Swami's explicit guidance through these the leaders in the organization, each country managing its own under the umbrella of the inter international organization. As it developed, then there are many, many changes. First, there were only coordinators. Then subsequently, as it developed, Swami had the zone chairs and all the various levels of officers uh, appointed. Then in 2003, as we heard, the Prashanti Council was formed and Swami himself appointed the members for the Prashanti Council. So actually some of them are present in this particular call. So who can uh, verify the 
their experiences regarding the instructions Swami gave. Dr. William Harvey was appointed, myself, Dr. Goldstein, and Leonardo Gutter, and Marian Myers. So all these people were appointed by Swami himself when he was there. So that Prashanti Council is the administrative body to guide how the various satsai centers, groups uh, are run around the world as per the Swami's guidelines. So as it developed, Swami's prophetic vision, he need, see, uh, saw the need for a legal structure for two purposes. One, we are involved in various service, humanitarian service activities around the world. So whenever you need to receive some funds or so resources, you need to have a legal body. So a legal body was formed. And also he said there are many publications, audiovisual materials, our materials, logos, which if it is not copyrighted, people can take advantage of and misuse it. So Swami said it is needed. Actually, Swami in his prophetic vision probably is the one 1969, Swami himself gave that Satyasai is name is copyrighted to Satyasai Society of America. It is one signature which we have, which we shared with people before. Swami gave that copyright so that anybody who want to abuse that, so they will be corrected. Actually, our uh, attorney, Dr. Uh, Mr. Robert Baskin, has taken action in the direction many times. So the, the, the World Foundation was formed. When Swami formed the Prashanti Council, as I said, with Dr. Goldstein and Dr. Harvey and Leonardo Gutta and myself, he personally called us. He, he personally called me to his house in uh, Prashanti Nalayam, in the uh, house that time next to Purna Chandra, where Swami was there in the interim before he moved to the Ejur Mandir. And he says, take responsibility in this organization. And he gave the specific directives. Me and Dr. Goldstein, he called for lunch, and then uh, he blessed us for the, direct, the directives. Subsequently, even when we had at the end to Brindavan, in Thai Brindavan, Swami called Dr. Harvey, myself, Leonardo Gutta, and Dr. Goldstein for food, and uh, also gave the um, guidelines, and even called the dinner because of the anniversary of Thai Brindavan. And he told specifically, now you people should go to all corners of the world and spread Swami's message. That is the directive. He says, you need to, now time has come, you should go. And then he said, you need to arrange public meetings. A lot of you might know, during the time, starting 2000, we had public meetings all over the world, whether it is Europe, Latin America, North America, Asia, Australia. We had various public meetings, even there, Swami gave the theme, how long the first speaker speaks, 30 minutes, second speaker, 20 minutes, question and answer. Swami was the Lord of the universe. He went into meticulous de detail uh, guiding us. And subsequently, as I said, 2006, March was the World Foundation formed. And for those reasons, as I said, for copyright and for uh, uh, receiving the funds. And Swami said, this commandment that this will be the governing body of the Sri Satyasai International Organization, which will work along with Prashanti Council, which is the administrative body. And he said, this, this bodies will be responsible for, we have the bylaws, responsible for the running of all the Satyasai centers, groups, trusts, schools, and institutes. And Swami gave a very clear instruction and he looked at the, all the bylaws of the Sri Satsai World Foundation. Some of you might have watched the uh, video, please, if not, because I don't want to spend too much time. We want to have more time for question and answers. So there Swami gave the directions. Suresh Govind interviewed me and Leonardo Gutter and uh, Dr. Harvey, where I went into detail how Swami guided at every step how these things should it will be done and gave the bylaws. And he appointed the directors that time to myself, Dr. Goldstein and uh, Giri. And then he expanded the board of directors. And he told us to publish in Sanatan Sarathi, the voice of the avatar, 
uh, which himself started on February 16, 1958, saying that is a divine command. And then subsequently in December of 2006, Swami expanded the board of directors. He added uh, uh, Dora and then A.B. Ramakrishna and Gary Bells, and he was uh, appointed as chairman. So all this process, Swami himself appointed and guided when he was there. And then this process continued, you know, then Swami, we developed the guidelines till 2011. That means before he left the bodies, November of 2010 is the one when we again had the guidelines, we went showed the Swami and we updated the guidelines. So till November of 2010, we had a physical guidance in his, in his physical form. Even 2011, but not about the organization, about some other organizational matters, Swami guided because we don't want to bother him because his body was affected uh, and he was fragile and feeble in the body. I, I know he's, uh, Swami is eternal, but he still continues to, he has not gone anywhere. He's our eternal companion and he continues to guide us. And that is the way we have been running. So this SI international organization has been running over almost six decades, 65 till now. And there are not only Swami guided, but there are many, many officers, devotees, and members who dedicated their lives, sacrificed, I mentioned few names, but there are many more. In each region, we can say how many people have been working, like Leonardo Guter for uh, more than four decades, Dr. Harvey for five, and so many people in Petro Marino in uh, Italy. There are many people, Howard Muffet, all these people, they sacrifice their life for the divine mission and develop. That is the way it is. And let me tell you, such side international people go on saying, Dr. Reddy, Dr. Reddy is one of the ones happened to, I'm first a devotee more than thing, and I happened to be given that responsibility by Swami. That international organization is much more than a chairman. It has got the big structure more than anyone else. We have Prashanti Council since 2000, Three, and we have got a World Foundation. In fact, yesterday, we had a meeting of with all the Prashanti Council members. Some of them are here. We had a meeting with the uh, directors of the World Foundation, all the Zoom chairs from all over the world. And also we had a meeting with the central coordinators, deputy central coordinators, because it is not my voice. Swami says, whenever you're an organization, you should reflect the collective decision. It should be the combined decision of all the people who are actively serving the organization. So I'm happy to share with you that 107 countries have rededicated, yes, we are going to be working and serving the such side international organization as per the guidelines given by Bhagawan. So they completely committed and it won't change. And also let us remember, none of us, only Swami and his mission is eternal and permanent. None of us are today, and there are so many, as I said, Dr. Slab, so many great leaders, Kudumbarao, Charanjita, so many people came, served and gone. And this, the, all these bodies, we all will be gone. But his divine instructions cannot go. That is what we are emphasizing. So this will be there. So we are all smoothly running, all of us, so many countries doing wonderful work, sharing Swami's message, doing service in our own centers. We had so many, in spite of COVID-19, we had so many online programs, more than 500,000 people, half a million people were reached out with uh, Swami's message. And also we were doing service in many countries during the COVID-19, uh, including right now, providing oxygen supplies or PPI, everything is going on. Suddenly on November 23rd, when this announcement of Global Council was made, people were confused. What is this? First, people didn't even know. But as time went on, this confusion and doubt increased. It caused a lot of pain and anguish. So many, I really feel bad for so many devotees, centers, officers all over the world. It is causing real sad, uh, state of affairs, sometimes even between husband and I, wife, there's a difference of opinion. What is this global council between children and the, uh, parents? This is not needed because we were all one good, happy family doing the work. So, but here this came and caused, and so I, I get so much 
uh, painful letters from all over, the nasty calls, nasty letters. And people said, oh my God, how are you able to do this? I said, I pray to Swami to give me courage and strength to bear this with fortitude, forbearance, and equanimity. That's all I can do. Actually, in fact, a uh, few months ago, I told the officers, I served Swami long, so if we can go on, move on, have somebody. Then they said, no, 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 how can you? Swami gave you the responsibility. How can you walk out? It is your dharma to be there, to take care of the thing. And the right time comes, we have bylaws, how we will change. So we are not here, none of the officers to hold on to the patient, uh, position because this is the rumors going on. Now, coming back to that, as I said, I will show a short clip of the video. Four things I wanted to maintain because there are some dispel. Number one, Satsai International Organization is founded, nurtured, guided by Swami and will be continued to be that. And also there are many leaders and officers and devotees who have sacrificed all these 60 years. So we need to preserve that sanctity of this particular sacred organization which bears his name. So we will continue to operate everything, our centers, groups, institute, everything as, as being done right now. Unless you get influenced by somebody who says, no, no, you should do this. It is left as our duty is to educate what is the right thing to do. Finally, even the Lord uh, Krishna, even our Swami says, our duty is to tell what is right. Finally, choice is everybody's, as he said, by source, not by force. So in this process, when there is differences between people, as I said, it's causing pain to the devotees, to the officers, to me, to so many people. Yes, we need to resolve the differences with love and mutual respect. Let us each one take their own decision. We should not condemn anybody, criticize, use foul language. That means that very fact that causes pain to Swami. Says, whenever you are causing pain, to anybody, Swami says, you're causing pain to me. So yes, we can always agree to differ, but let us proceed with the dignity. Okay, this is my path and let us proceed. So for people who want to continue, there is no change. Unless you want to change, SSSO is already working the way it is and you continue to run your center, go to your center, do your activities, no change. Second thing is our connection to Prashant Nilayam, will continue forever. Our connection to Swami and our connection to Prashant Yalam is the, also a gift from Swami. Swami, even before any organization came, international, national, anything, he used to tell the devotees, this is your home, come anytime. He told me many times, you are, this is your home. Swami, when I come, you <coughs> come anytime because this is your home. So this is the home of a divine mother, mother and father, and nobody can put any restriction for that. We need to feel this is the right of every devotee who are entitled to Prashanti Nilayam. So that also the reassurance that to go to Prashanti Nilayam, have Swami's darshan, Swami himself assured. In fact, people say, oh, our, our relation to Prashanti in 2013, after Swami's Mahasamadhi, I gave a talk in Kulwant Hall saying we have five mandates, like focusing on Swami, teachings, the third was, to visit Prashant Nilayam, which is the holy place, the pilgrimage, holiest of the holy. I said, we should all as a side devotees visit and take the benefit of the holy vibration. So our connection to Prashant Nilayam will never change. Third about the unity, yes, we want to strive unity. We have been doing this since November 16th, when they sent a document till June 27th. We have more, I will show you one document, more than 40 phone calls. We have made uh, personal uh, email communications, including the meetings and teams, which we initiated in uh, May 30th to with the Central Trust members, some of our uh, other uh, SSAO leaders were there. And also I, I had a call on uh, June 17th with the managing trustee and All India president, and we had a Zoom call. So we continued this dialogue, and even the last email I wrote in June 27th to the trust, I said, the first subject is, love is the answer. SSIO is open for dialogue. That was my last concluding thing. We are still 
believe, we can with love, we can resolve things, and we are open for di dialogue as long the highest duty is we don't violate Swami's divine instructions, which he gave personally to me, to so many members like Dr. Harvey, Leonardo, Gutman, everybody, that is paramount, like Guru Purnima is coming, and Swami himself said the highest obligation of any devotee is implicitly following his command. You can go to the May 17th, 1968 discourse of Swami, that is, says more than doing japa, meditation, service, is implicitly, immediately following my command will take you to the summum bonum of life. And even Shri uh, Satchirita, if you read, he told even a Brahmin, he told him to kill a goat, and he, without hesitation, he wanted to do that to show he doesn't use any judgment. Once uh, my guru says, I implicitly follow. So we need to implicitly follow the uh, divine um, command. So here, finally, I wanted to uh, end showing that the video clip, which talks about the history. Briefly, this is about three minute video and also about uh, uh, the various uh, uh, correspondence we had, how to try to reach the unity. What all I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, let us not get disturbed by this noise. Everybody explore, go inside. Swami is Antarya, an indweller. Is this going to take me closer to God? Is it make me love more Swami? Is it make able to serve Swami? Yes, take the decision, whatever it is, which makes us closer to God, makes us happy and blissful, that is the right decision. Anything which causes agitation, makes us lose peace, takes us away from God, that is not good. That is Swami said the test is how your heart responds to this uh, question. And Swami says he's there always ready to give the answer. So I pray to Swami and we, I will be available for the, during the question and answer session and any time I can uh, uh, supplement any other information. Um, but just we have video clip and then we'll move on to the other speakers. Please go ahead. Uh, um. international organization these are all again you know are totally outside the purview of the central trust and we have to inform that the territorial jurisdiction of the central trust is only india and sri satisai central trust is one organization which does not own any property in any part of the world other than india mm -hmm.
Yeah, this is the one I wanted to show you starting November 16th. You can scroll down. So yeah, all these are the various calls, phone calls and emails, and not only by me, Leonardo and Bill Harvey wrote letters uh, and also uh, calls to Dr. Mohan. So all these things went on, went on and on. So the... Yeah, go, go down, yeah, wait, wait, wait. So like even 26th, yeah, that is what I requested for a meeting. So we initiated the uh, um, meeting to have online and then they agreed for 30th May. And the assurance was, this is the agenda they sent, reiteration of SST that don't disturb the structure and functioning. So with that condition, we said, yes, okay, we'll, join the Global Council as long as it is not disturbed and the terms of reference are honored. Go ahead. Next, go down, please. And then that is how we send the joint statement, go down. And then again, we had a meeting, uh, go down. Go down. So this are all, I don't want to bombard you, They're like June, the latest was June 17th, we had a Zoom meeting with uh, uh, Mr. Ratnakar, Mr. Nimish Pandya and uh, just go down. So I think the others, other uh, officers will address other things. Then I got received a call and June uh, email from a managing trustee. So we were having uh, uh, discussions going on. If he said that there's no need for any more dialogue, no dialogue, no calls or ma mails will be accepted. He wrote to that. So then uh, go down please. and. On June 27th, I, uh, I replied, still I said, we'll continue to have open for dialogue and love is the answer. So that is the last one we said, uh, then you can close that, please. So that is uh, up to it. And now, uh, yeah, so please, uh, uh, I, I had to send some details about this because some people had questions and, uh, they were asking. So now you can go ahead, Alex, with the rest of your uh, agenda. Thank Sai you. Raman, thank you. Sai Raman, Dr. Riri. Thank you very much. I would now like to invite Mr. Leonardo Guter to address this forum. Originally from Argentina, Mr. Guter is one of the founding members of the Sirisa Tesai movement in Latin America and has been serving Swami and his mission for nearly four decades. He was also appointed by Swami himself to the Prashanti Council and the Sri Satisai World Foundation, respectively. Brother Leonardo, welcome. Thank you. I offer my humble pranams at the Divine Lotus feet of our beloved Master and Lord, Bhagavan Sri Satisata Sai Baba. And I offer my love to all of you, dear brothers and sisters. I would like to share with you my direct, ex direct experiences with Swami regarding the Sri Satisai International Organization. I had the good fortune of participating in the meetings of the World Council. I was also a witness when Swami decided to dissolve it. And then when Swami formed two areas, East and West to run the international organization, then the mer he merged both in one. And then he in 2003 uh, created the Prashanti Council. As Dr. Reddy said, I had the fortune to be selected by him to be a member of the Prasanti Council. And I, I was in the meetings in his house and in the ashram with him where he gave us precise and detailed instructions about the purpose of the Prasanti Council, about the purpose of the CISATSA International Organization, how we should run it, how we should con conduct our meetings. Some people ask, where are the divine instructions? First of all, they were given to us directly. I heard the divine instructions from his lips, but then they were implemented in the guidelines that we have. So the guidelines are the real instructions given by Swami to all of us. I heard that some people are so tired with all what is happening that they are thinking about not only, not even going to the Global Council, but leaving the side organization. Let me tell you, in one of his, birthday celebration in one of his discourses then he said that the highest sadhana we can perform is to work in the side organization and those that leave the side organization are very unfortunate 
and he added, don't ever leave it. So dear brothers and sisters, we have worked so hard for many, many hundreds of lives to receive this opportunity to work in the divine organization created by the avatar. We should not lose this opportunity, this, this divine opportunity. We were working in unity, not only within the Sai organization, but also with the Central Trust and the Sai organization of India. We invited them to our meetings in Prashanti Nilayam. We shared with them our annual reports. We cooperated financially with them in all, all the works of Swami there with the hospital, the Sai uh, University. So all the time till now, till two weeks ago, money received were sent to them. So we felt that there was unity, but suddenly out of the blue, we received this communication on November 16 that they wanted to create the Global Council. I spoke with uh, Brother Randakar and he said, don't worry, we will wait for your feedback. We will not do anything without your feedback and we will respect your structure and functioning. But to our surprise, one week later, November 23rd, Naganand announced the creation of the Global Council. So they were not waiting on our feedback at all. When I called Naganand, he told me, this is a done deal. Brothers and sisters, they said, I asked them why. They said, we want to have unity, but we're united. So isn't it crazy? They said that the purpose of the Global Council is to achieve more unity, but it's creating this unity. Then they said that the purpose of the Global Council was to have more communications. We were having communications with them all the time. And I told them that if they wanted on May 30th, when we have the meeting, I told them we can set a schedule, we can schedule a monthly call. So we exchange more inf information with you and receive information from you as well. Then they said, what will happen when we are not anymore? When, when in 20, 30, 40 years, we are the, the members that were appointed by Swami are not anymore. This surprised me even more, because if we believe that Swami is a Purna Avatar, what he left us, the structure and the functioning he left us, will be good forever, not only for the next 50 or 500 years, will be good forever. So we have to have trust and confidence that the, the directions from Swami will be good for all time. We started to exchange a lot of communication because the concept paper they sent us when they decided to create the Global Council was contrary to the divine instructions, completely against what Swami told us. So I spoke one day with Dr. Mohan, member of the Central Trust, and he told me, Leonardo, don't worry, the Central, the concept paper is left behind. Just, just let's do a body with three members of the Central Trust three members of the Organization of India and three members of the International Organization that will be a coordinated and consultative body. I said, this is wonderful. I will speak with Dr. Reddy and with the members of the Prashanti Council, but I think we can work on that. So immediately after my call, I spoke with Dr. Reddy. He was also in agreement with this. But again, next morning, Brother Naganan sent an email to Dr. Reddy stating again all that was there in the concept paper. That was unacceptable because it was contrary to the divine instructions given to us. So then we started uh, again, mails, letters. Finally, as Dr. Reddy said, we invited them to uh, an online call. And in that online call, we discussed uh, with each, each one, each body shared their, their point of, of view. And we reached an agreement to join the Global Council upon if two conditions were met that our structure and functioning were going to be respected as they mentioned so many times in that call that is recorded. And the second that we are going to develop in terms of reference that will be agreed by all parties. So we start working on this uh, terms of reference in full detail, Brother Suresh, who is going to speak with you, was one of the main people working on them. And we adjusted to their needs, almost everything that they wanted without compromising the divine instructions. We sent it to them, but next day we received an email from Randakar saying that they didn't want to speak with us anymore, that uh, either we accept their terms of reference unconditionally 
or not to call them or send an email or have any kind of communications with them. Dear brothers and sisters, when we start a process to reach an agreement, we send a proposal, we should receive a response, the feedback, and then we discuss till we reach an agreement. But it cannot be that after the first proposal, they close the door on our faces. They said that we walk out. We didn't walk out. It was just that they didn't want to continue speaking with us. They walk out. They left us with one option, was to unconditionally surrender to them. And we only surrendered unconditionally to Swami, not to the managing trustee. We had to follow the divine instruction. Swami said that the highest discipline, the highest sadhana that any human being can perform is to follow immediately, implicitly the divine command. So this is the most important thing for us. They told us that we left in our terms of reference, the most important part. We put something so good, we follow the divine statements by Swami, his divine mission. This was for us the most important thing, but he told us that this was not the most important thing. The most important thing was appointment, supervision, authority. So Swami, when he was in his physical body, he never asked us to merge or be under the central trust. On the contrary, he had three separate bodies. As you have seen, the Swiss Organization of India, the Central Trust, the International Organization. The Central Trust is not Swami, it's not equal to Swami, it's just a body created by Swami to run the ashram, to supervise the educational and service activities in India, to supervise the health activities done by the super specialty hospitals in India. But he, created the Swiss Organization of India to run all the centers. And he created the international organization to run the international activities overseas. So for us, it is very unacceptable when one person says, it is my way or no way. They want to impose on us what they want. And Swami said, always through the source, never by force. They are now reaching out to all the centers and countries, <clears throat> trying to convince them through threats, putting conditions. If we don't register, you don't, we will not be able to perform cultural programs, or a country will not sing all together in the ashram, or will, you will not have a special city. Threats. So I mean, never put us any condition or any threat, only love. He said, come here and receive my love. Then now they go to the next step, temptations. What you will receive. I heard that now they are offering a, a, a robe to any center or country that will join them. This is not Swami's way. Swami's way is the way of love. He has always gave us love. So dear brothers and sisters, we cannot, if they want unity, if they said that they want unity, why are they creating so much disunity? Why they are trying to dismantle the organization that Swami created? Now they are creating a replica of the international organization. Yesterday I read the new structure, appointing new people. What are they doing is ununderstandable. We are working so well, so united. Now they will feel, I told them, we want to feel that we have a global council, but only with just a few countries and a few centers. This is a fake global council. First, they were instrumental to the Budenahali situation. And now it's not enough for them. They are splitting the international organization. This is something that Swami will not like at all. So each one of you will have to take a decision. You have to decide if you want to follow the divine command given by Swami, or if you want to follow the command given by the managing trustee. It's so simple as that. So dear brothers and sisters, I hope that you will say, as Arjuna said, I will follow your commands, dear Lord. Jai Saidan. Thank you, Brother Leonardo, uh, for your words. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, before we move on, uh, I would like to acknowledge that there's plenty of questions that are coming up. I know many of you are eager to get to this uh, portion uh, of the meeting, and I want to assure you that we will. And uh, there will be plenty of time to address uh, all the questions that come in. Uh, before that, we just have one last presentation, and that will be by Dr. Suresh Govind from Malaysia. He, of course, needs uh, no introduction, and he has been instrumental 
uh, into in these discussions regarding the Global Council. Brother Suresh, please. Thank you, uh, Brother Alex. Uh, by the infinite grace, love and compassion of Bhagawan, we've come here today to seek some clarification, respected elders, beloved brothers and sisters. Let me just rush, run through or rush through and condense some of these points so that we can have more time for questions and answers. So technically, uh, just to let you know where, how, where we are, the first terms of reference were sent out by Central Trust then we created the joint statement. Then we worked together on the terms of reference on version two. Then a version three was uh, put up in the Central Trust, I mean, in the Global Council website. This is how the sequence of events took place. So in the, for the last 50 years, all three organizations have been having harmonious working relationship, unity, mutual, we focus and everything was beautiful and peaceful and everything was so wonderful and fantastic. So it is as if Bhagawan created three beautiful ships and all three different organizations and he gave specific directions, specific guidelines, specific instructions so that if all three functions beautifully and we were co uh, communicating and talking in that manner in order for us to achieve our point of excellence. Then the structure of the Satisai, uh, the Global Council's uh, version, the first version came out. And this is basically the summarized picture of it in which they formed the Executive Council one and Executive Council two. The one was referred to the international organization and two was Indian organization. So what happened was the Central Trust formed the first terms and then they just, uh, yeah, sent it out all to the various size centers and urging uh, centers to register on the 50 by 50 15th of June, uh, otherwise we will not get any privileges. Then the meeting took place on May 30th and it was very clear. This is just want to clarify. Many people say, why you all joined and then you came out. We, there was no, we, never, we actually literally never joined. We only said we will work in unity to formulate the terms of reference of the Sri Satisai Global Council with mutual uh, consultation. So we were working on it. Why? Because the only way in all three can come together is to agree to certain things. And that is why very a uh, lot of time was taken and this is what we proposed and uh, 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 the terms of reference summarizes this in a beautiful structure which says that it is not a supervisory body but a unifying coordinating and consulting body only protocols of love and mutual respect without any protocol of authority and power retaining the original intention now this document was very very difficult to do because it was to keep the intentions of the Global Council by, but by not altering the original structure given by Bhagawan. So this was, took a long time and we, a lot of patience, a lot of consultations took place in order to develop this document. And this is what how it is. In essence, what it is, is that in our document, it, uh, very careful, very clearly, we focused on the mission of Satisai because instead of talking about structure and functions, structure and functions must always um, go towards fulfilling what is the mission. And we took the three mission statements of Bhagawan uh, from his, the letter which he wrote on May 25th, uh, 1947. He said, I have a task to foster all mankind and ensure everyone gets ananda. I have a vow to lead all who stray away from the path into goodness. I'm attached to work that I love. So meaning to say the three the spiritual component, the educational component, and the uh, service component, all three beautiful statements. And we said, hey, if the Global Council is formed, let us shoulder this amazing uh, vision and mission of Swami. So objectives was to expand and uh, expand the organization and firmly establish our connection to Prashanti Nilayam. At no point that we ever, at, has ever been said that it is not otherwise. So for us, the spiritual headquarters is Swami's uh, for, in Prashanti Nilayam. So again, in the, the terms of reference, clearly stated we are wanting to be a unifying coordinating and consulting body for the purposes of making sure that the whole global council will become more visible because then we'll be we will be working with the strategizing and leveraging the strengths of all three organizations managing resources so that we become more visible for the devotees and the members of the uh, public as well as make it impactful yes we may be doing programs here and there but the collective force can make this whole program whole uh, collective work to become more impactful and to disseminate swami's teachings far and wide to all uh, parts of the world so this is what it was we put structure and function of the sri satisai council we even uh, put it this is this, these are words that it was on the original um, document so this is what brother leonardo said 
we did everything possible to make sure because our intention was to unite. Who wants to be this unity? It is very clear we wanted to come together. We wanted to be together and safe. Therefore, the document had all the components. In the General Assembly, dear brothers and sisters, we could have just put a small group of people. No, we put everybody inside, the trustees, the chairman, all India president, all members, all Prashanti Council, all directors, all National Council of India, of the SSIO, everybody was inside this General Assembly. That means literally the whole world. And this was what we proposed. And we even said we have two meetings, one June, July, and the following. We even went to the, uh, uh, the, the uh, trouble and effort to put even the agenda of that meeting, who should decide the meeting and all that. And we put this also. We put a chairman, the first chairman, uh, Sri Satisai Global Council, will have one chairman and two vice chairmen. Then the subsequent years, every two years, we rotate the chairman. Why? Because it gives a very clear signal that all three bodies are uniform and no one body is supervisory or one body or uh, have veto power over others. So it is um, by mutual respect, we will do this. This is what we proposed in it. And then we had an executive committee one, which was basically responsible for the SSIO, and executive committee two, responsible for the Indian organizations. We defined the meetings, we had the role and objective of the executive committee, what should be done. We clearly put all the objectives, which is what in all the speeches of Brother Ratnakar and Brother Naganan is these are the objectives, which means to say, if your objective of a structure is to fulfill some object uh, of functions, we have clearly put it here, advising, coordinating, consultative body, exchange information, focus better. We put all these words inside the document and even provide access, facilitate the pilgrimages. I mean, the document was so complete uh, that we thought that this will be it because we took a lot of time and effort to take it. We even had administrative committee for SSIO International. We have an administrative committee for the Indian organization. We had the administrative committee and the purpose of the administrative committee was to execute all the decisions and directions of the uh, oh, sorry, uh, purpose of the administrative committee was to implement the directions of the executive committee. And this we did, uh, only thing that we said was leave the appointments out because that requires us a, 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 a process in, involved. Example, uh, I came in, into the Sai movement uh, 25 years ago as a young youth, as a young adult. And then through the process, it was only after almost 20 to 25 years later that I was the president. Why was that happening? Because there's a process of selection, a process of making sure people literally see what you are capable of or being accepted. And this is how every country, everyone uh, uh, has does it. Therefore, the protocols and the processes have been developed over the years uh, as per Bhagawan Baba's direction. And that is how 119 countries have been managing, have been managed so seamlessly and harmoniously and this is how it has been done. So when we start plucking and putting people differently and putting in different places accordingly, we will find that it will upset the structure. But one must understand an organization is structure. The pillars of an organization is the structure and the protocols that are involved. And this did not come overnight. It came through because of the instructions of Bhagavan. I think one more point that we need to make as devotees is that we need to make decisions. And decisions must be based on what? On principles. Principles must must be based on what? On our understanding of the teachings of Bhagavan Baba. Bhagavan himself, if he has taken and had numerous interactions with our leaders, firstly taken, uh, takes paper or pen and pencil and goes through these words and recommends and adds and, and uh, gives real instructions, means he has painstakingly, the avatar of the Kali Yuga painstakingly creates an organization for the purposes of what? For the purposes of, guys, I'm pushing these three ships into the sea. I will wait to, after 2011. I'll wait for you on the other side. Come, uh, bring the people and come to me. And this is how we have been sailing so beautifully and so wonderfully. The implicit adherence to the teacher is the ultimate expression of devotion. What else is spirituality? Spirituality is summoning our wisdom and to see, and this is what it is. We, if we are clearly saying that this did not happen, and there was this never happened at all, yes, then maybe there is a point, but it happened. Bhagavan, in the history of this organization, this is what Bhagavan has taken the time and the trouble to do it. So therefore, 
when we are saying it is not about hungry for power, there's this type of terms that have been used, which is very painful, hungry for power, uh, this is a power struggle. It is not that, it is because of the simple need to follow the teacher and follow what he has said. So if we wanted to achieve the objective of the Global Council, the terms of reference that has been pointed out have been structured so beautifully fulfills that. That means we can become that body, but it is this that we uh, were uh, not wanting to uh, uh, comply to in terms of the appointment part of it, and that we said need not be. So even this, we clearly put that uh, who should be there, who should not be there. Everything was clearly stated. And that is how we said, we even established, we even said we will collaborate with, the, with all, all other organizations and even uh, have all this, uh, what we want, that's what Swami has said, the privileges. And dear brothers and sisters, privileges today, about when we go to Prashanti Nilayam, they have already assured us what, that the uh, ashram uh, sitting and the, uh, sorry, the, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, Mahasamadhi Darshan, as well as the uh, uh, rooms will be given to anybody. So that is already assured. So in the question of special seating privileges may not be given. It doesn't matter now, wherever we sit, we will be able to access Bhagavan because in that sense, you see. So, it, so this is what it is. We clearly put there in this global council that we propose, there will be no protocols of authority and power, but protocols of love and mutual respect. This is what we clearly stated and we put this document. So therefore in our uh, terms of reference, the third terms of reference that came about is when they took the first four or five sheets of our terms of reference and uh, put it together with theirs. And that became the third terms of reference, which is now in the Global Council's website. So this is what the history of these terms of reference, which is the basis about how we should come together. First one drafted 23rd, second one drafted 26th May, and now it has been structured and functions have been altered. And this is what that is published unilaterally as final on Global Council website. We were in the midst of working out all this when the other document came to, we was right in the middle of this when the letter came to say that the doors are closed and you no more com communication. So how can we proceed? So this is where we are right now. It is now that we now need to be strong. We have to be very, very, uh, very, very strong. We have to have immense amount of faith and we see Swami as our eternal teacher, our guide and follow our conscience and make sure that we do uh, the right things uh, in the right way in the right manner. If of course, as what is stated, if people still, if there are people who are moving out then they will have to, uh, they will uh, go according to what they desire. I mean, nobody can stop that, that is the decision. But here, what we are doing is an informed consent. Everybody knows exactly what is the sequence. People must not say that we did not attempt to unify. People must not say that we went in and came out. People must not say that it is Los Angeles and put uh, Prashanti, that is not true as well. And the last one is a power struggle, which is not true as well. So this uh, four aspects of it is what that is uh, sometimes uh, confusing the devotees. As devotee, we pray and hope and continuously ask for Swami's blessings that we will make the right choices and be guided to fulfill so that we can all together advance the mission of Satisai. Thank you, Saira. Thank you, brother uh, Suresh. Now, brothers and sisters, we will enter the question and answer uh, segment of, um, of this uh, town hall meeting. Thank you for patiently waiting. So we will start uh, now with the first question to our esteemed panelists, as well as to members of the Prashanti Council. Um, this is a high level question and uh, it has come through and we, we, we think it is important uh, given the current state of affairs. So to our panelists, the first one is, it is a time of confusion right now. In this time of confusion, what is your advice to the devotees and officers of the SSSIO? Well, I think I want to say something right now and try to uh, respond to that. Um, because to me, I think it's important to not let other people tell us what we think or what our agenda is. Uh, so it's not really a time of confusion. It's a time of clarity and clarification. It's a time that we can, we can benefit and reflect on our, our good fortune. We, we as members of the organization, as, as devotees of, of Bhagavan, are, are, are lucky, are very fortunate. And so 
first and foremost, we ought to remain calm. We can remain calm because we are secure. We're secure in the knowledge that the Supreme Lord of the universe is with us. He's guiding us, he's guarding us. So we should never let any kind of chaos and distraction that's occurring somewhere over there upset us and take us off our goal. Our goal is to, as indicated to us by the Lord himself, is to become aware in this lifetime of our divine essence and to share that message with as many people that are willing to are open to, to receive it. Those who aren't yet, yet open to receive it will receive it later at another lifetime and so forth. But it is to our benefit to, to move forward and not allow ourselves to be distracted. It's very simple. We don't have to get very complicated. If something is not broken, we should not be trying to fix it. Also remember that if someone wants to sell us something, if they want to sell us something, you sell something because you want to make you have a you want to make some sort of profit from selling something to somebody else. And one of the things you do is to you try to create in the minds of the people you want to buy this idea or this product, you want to make them think that they need it, that it will benefit them. If that doesn't work, then you you use the the selling tool of fear. If you don't do this, this bad thing will happen. If you don't do this, this bad thing will happen. Or you try to entice them with various kinds of, uh, I'll give you this, I'll give you that. But we don't have to be, we don't have to be influenced by what other people tell us. The Lord is resident in each of our hearts. He has a heart to heart connection with each of us. Never forget that. He doesn't have intermediaries. He's told us that many, many times. So he wants us to be happy, not confused and disturbed. If they want to try to make us uh, confused and afraid, they can try, but they can't succeed unless we cooperate. And I would urge us all to continue to remember Swami, to move forward, to realize that this is the happiest time of our lives. We are surrounded by divinity. We recognize our own divinity. We are striving to make our lives his message. It's a happy time. He wants us to continue to be happy. Thank you very much. Uh, another question, just I would like to give you a little bit of context. We have over 40 questions that have actually come our way. We're gonna try our best to actually get through as many as possible. I would also like to kindly request our STEAM panelists and uh, to please try to keep these uh, answers as succinct as possible. Uh, but we will try to work our way through all of these uh, if at all possible. The next question relates to yesterday's, uh, yesterday's meeting held by the Sri Satyasai Central Trust. Um, the names of Dr. Michael Goldstein and Dr. Sam Sandweiss were mentioned. Um, and uh, it was mentioned that Dr. Sandwise Center had joined the Global Council. Uh, we would like to know whether they were present or not, and if so, what are their views about the Global Council? Dear brothers, Sairam again. Swami taught us that we have to follow truth, satya, and dharma. I have spoken yesterday with uh, our brother Sandwise, and I asked him if he has joined the Global Council or if he wanted to join it. And if his center has joined it, he rejected both. He said that he didn't join, he didn't participate in the call yesterday, and his center didn't join the Global Council. Then I found out about our brother, Michael Goldstein. He never participated in the call. He had no intention, he has no intention to join in the Global Council. So it's very sad that they implied that both of them were there and were happy with the Global Council. This is not true. Sayla. Thank you. Next question. 
what were the divine commands given to the SSSIO before Swami left his form? Okay, I want to, if you allow me, Alex, let me tell you this. When the divine commands were given directly by Swami to us, to Dr. Goldstein, to Dr. Narendra Reddy, to my brother William Harvey, to myself, but there were also, there are also in the guidelines that you see, the guidelines that we have have been reviewed page by page, have been corrected by Swami, have been approved by him and have been blessed by him. So these guidelines are his divine commands. You must have no doubt about it. Thank you. Uh, this is a question that has come um, often and uh, we're trying to group them as best as possible in themes. Uh, so the next question is, why not join the Global Council for the sake of unity? Uh, I will just answer and you can add if you want Leonardo or Bell. So as we have seen the chronology of various things from November 16th, so unity is divinity, Swami says. So we definitely we want to have unity. So only because of that, we had con con continued correspondence by emails and by phone calls and all that. And uh, if we didn't want to have, we would have said in the beginning itself, okay, we have nothing to do with global council, we'll stay aloof. The very fact we wanted to communicate, myself called and uh, Leonardo called and uh, uh, Dr. Harvey wrote letters, all of that, and actually more than 100 officers have written separately at the different levels, central coordinator, zone chairs, thing expressing their views about the global council that shows we want to work with them. We want to work in unity. That is why even after the Zoom calls and after the thing, we said, yes, that is why we should join. We will join the Global Council because unity is more important. But for us, following Swami's instructions is important. The second is structure and function of the organization cannot be changed because that is given by Swami some child who is given by Swami, someone, Swami says, hey, I entrust you this responsibility to take care and you can't, want, can't walk away. So I said, we will join the Global Council for sure, but with only two conditions, no change in the structure and function of the organization and the terms of reference, we should all agree. But those two things were not honored. That is why we could not join. But still, as I said, we want, love is the answer. We are open for dialogue. So we said unity is not at the expense. Unity means we want somebody says, hey, I want to be united to don't follow Swami's instruction. Unity is more important, but unity at what expense? Unity not at the expense of disobeying Swami's command. Unity is not at the expense of the threat or a fear or temptation. Unity should be on the basis of love and mutual respect. So we are still for unity as long as those uh, things are not brought into fold. Dr. Reddy, if I could, uh, there's a question that uh, is related. Is there anybody else want to add what is it? Okay, well, go ahead, Alex, go ahead. Yeah, there's a question that, uh, that follows that. Uh, you may have addressed it, but uh, it is, uh, why is the SSIO not discussing global council with the Sri Satya Sai Central Trust? Did we engage in discussions and communications with the Sri Satya Sai Central Trust about the global council? I think I already answered even in the presentation, starting with November 16, the series of discussions, phone calls, emails, communication. If that is not an attempt to uh, engage in communication, what else I don't know. So we had uh, tried our best. So it, she's a mutual thing, it's not one way. So I said, uh, so we have shown the document where we share more than 40 communications. What else can we do other than appeal to them? And if somebody is not receptive, there is nothing we can do. So just as I said, there is no call or no discussion. We cannot force anybody. As I said, everything should be. If we request somebody, if they say yes, we'll work on that. Actually, Leonardo wanted to add also further something. No, yes, what you said was perfect. And actually communication is a two way. We have to have two people that want to communicate with each other. We tried, we reached out to them. We invited them to this meeting. We offered them to prepare the terms of reference. We agreed that we were going to discuss this, but suddenly they closed the door on our face. So we cannot go and throw the door and tell them, 
yes, please, please speak to us. Because they put a condition, you have to accept our terms of reference, which are not acceptable according to some instructions. So what else can we do? I think you should ask the central trust why they don't want to speak with us, because it is them that they don't want to talk with us. And uh, here we are going to add, if we join the Global Council with the, what the, their terms of reference is, is clear violation. We can show anybody who wants to one-to-one, -one, we'll be happy one of our officers can. It will be clearly a violation of the guidelines and instructions given by Swami. It will dismantle all the committees, the schools, structure. And what is the purpose? Purpose of the increase in the unity. And also everybody should verify. Yes, the purpose of the Global Council is unity. Before November, we were all one family, 120 countries doing all the work and all that. Proof of the pudding is in eating. So are we more united than November now with all these concepts? How many people so sad, anguish among our fellow brothers, sisters, devotees, officers, some countries like Nepal uh, trying to be dissuaded and going and UK, many countries. So this is very painful process. So. In the process of trying to create unity, the actions speak louder than what the words are. So there is uh, uh, trying to have the division, but we, as Leonard all said, we follow God, what he gave us, or we follow what some person has established. That is what we should uh, know before. Narendra, if you allow me, I would like to add something else. Many people don't realize what they really want to add to our terms of reference, what they what they are adding. When I called, we I spoke with Brother Ranakar, the first call I had with him, he offered me the position of Dr. Reddy. I was surprised. On the first call, he wanted to replace Dr. Reddy. Then what they wanted, they wanted to appoint the key officers of the side organization that were appointed by Swami. Second, they wanted to appoint any person in any position at any time whoever they like. So if they don't like the face of a National Council President of a Central Coordinator, they wanted to have the, the, the ability to replace them for a person that they like. Third, they wanted that all our committees, the committees that were created under the World Foundation and the Presidential Council, be supervised and under their control. Swami gave us a procedure to appoint officers. He gave us very detailed instructions how we should work. Shall we forget all that? Did Arjuna, Arjuna was confused and he didn't want to go to the war and Krishna had to convince him. At the end, he said, I have explained everything to you. Do as you like. Alex, Arjuna may I? To follow Krishna, Sairam. Alex, may I just add something? Um, I just want uh, a little uh, clarification. Uh, the position of the SSIO to stick to Swami's divine command is not out of stubbornness. It is called bhakti. Remember, even in the story of Prahlada, you know, he held on to God and his faith in God and his belief in God. And his, his father could have said, join me for the sake of unity of this family. But Prahlada didn't. That is bhakti. This is bhakti. You can paint it any way you want. You can paint it as stubbornness. You can paint it as uh, intransigence. But the truth is bhakti. Let us all be united in bhakti. That's what Swami is about. Our life is his message. And what is his message today? The world is watching us. Really? Is the message that five centers have joined uh, GC or we... Let us instead send a message. Five people's lives have been saved during this worst medical crisis the world has ever seen. Let bhakti be our basis. Let love be our basis. That's my personal view. We're well, all very good, good point. That's what actually what you said that Prahlada, his father says, why are you so stubborn, boy? Why don't you work with me? Why don't you allow your father unity? Let us, between father and son. But he says, some things we cannot compromise. Dad, so that's love for God. Other things I can adjust with you, not that here. Very good uh, comparison. Good. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, brothers. Uh, we have a question actually related to the terms of reference as well. I think it's been addressed. I, I saw Brother Suresh wanting to, to uh, mention anything. Brother Suresh, anything you'd like to add there, or can I move to the next question? 
So I think uh, I think uh, we I have exhausted the subject of the terms of reference. Mm -hmm. We put everything in perspective. I don't know whether any any more extra clarification is necessary. But it's the terms of references. The documents are all available with us. And anybody wants to have further, we can always uh, access them and look at it. I I just want to uh, say only one word. I think it we want to appeal to everyone to make them understand that a lot of time and a lot of effort has gone into the documentation. It is not simple. It is not easy. We went in only for one purpose, to come together. That was all what we tried to do. But uh, it is now in this situation. It's like that. Alex, I want to add something very quickly to that. When we worked on the terms of reference, our goal was to satisfy all the sites, not just the SSIO site. So the document that you see from the Global mm -hmm. Council right now on the street was actually crafted by the SSIO officers working long hours over a very short time under Dr. Eddie's guidance. But they inserted the portion which relates to command and control and destruction of the structure of the SSIO. That portion was added by them. But we worked hard to show that we like to cooperate, we like to collaborate, and we like to go forward with them. So, so one, all of that language that you see, other than the command control and structure and organization is from the original SSIO document. One yeah. more point, Alex, is that what is extremely puzzling, and that is what we are not able to fathom, is that if Swami wanted this design, he would have done it in his physical form when he was around. He did not do that. Why would he take so much time and effort to personally guide this in sep uh, separately and suddenly now a new structure that overrules his his structure it doesn't make sense. It is very puzzling as to why the divine would have done that. So this is why we are sticking to what we are saying and clearly following what he wants to do. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. There's a, there's another question that has come uh, regarding unity. I believe that that uh, has been addressed uh, at this point in time. So I'll move on to the the next question. Um, it's a compounded question. What is what is the benefit of the Global Council for size centers and groups? And are all trustees of the Sri Satisai Central Trust uh, involved in this matter? So let me try to address that, um, Alex, and then I'll wait to uh, see if Dr. Eddy or Brother Leonardo wants to jump in. Um, firstly, let me talk about the trustees because I did talk to one of them and then I was on the call with the rest of them on uh, May 30th. I really do not know why only Sri Naganand Garu and Sri Ratnakar Garu are pushing the Global Council through numerous channels and bombarding devotees around the world outside India. This is upsetting a lot of people. However, I do know that there are several trustees who are honorable, sattvic people of stature and spiritual wisdom. So I have heard from senior devotees in India that some of them are of a different opinion about the Global Council and that they would prefer a forum of cooperation and collaboration, as Brother Suresh just mentioned, not one of command control and dominance of one organization over the others. These are three brothers that were created by our divine father and mother working together for a long, long time. Now, regarding the benefits, this is another puzzling question. So regarding benefits for overseas, overseas devotees, we couldn't find an answer for how it is going to help us with our spiritual sadhana. See, the SSIO has been functioning very well over decades, over several decades under Swami's careful guidance, his blessings and step-by-step and -step instructions. The trustees themselves have told us this in the past. So what is the need for a change to something that is created by Bhagavan? I mean, how, how do we perfect on perfect? I don't know, but I've heard, and Dr. Etty or Leonardo mentioned this before, that they have offered Global Council positions, they have offered gifts of Swami's robes, ashram privileges, and little trinkets in exchange for signing up for the Global Council. You know, this may be swaying some people who are not deeply rooted in faith in Swami's teachings, but is this really spirituality? But I want to leave you with one thought at the end. Recall that the SSI structure has been developed by over 50 years, you know, all the National Council President, the Central Coordinator, Zone Chairs, Committee Chairs, everybody, Prashanti Council members, World Foundation Directors. Now this structure, including our talented young adults, has been nurtured and guided by Swami himself. 
So the vast majority of the leaders talked about this, you know, from more than 100 countries and resolved after careful consideration, we didn't do this in a vacuum. This is not just Dr. Reddy's decision, Leonardo's decision or mine. This is a united decision that will continue to follow Swami. As Brother Venkat so nicely said before, you know, this is our offering of love to Swami and that we will call, follow him and we'll serve humanity the same way that we have served for the last 60 years. So I want Alex. to add here, uh, what does global council, how does it help? As you said, number one, what is global? Global or world means same, global council, world council. Swami himself in his infinite wisdom and love dissolved it in 1987. Why do you want to revive something which has scrapped and something which he started under his guidance, why do you want to dismantle that, the organization which is formed? And what is the purpose? He said, how is it going to benefit the devotees and centers? I want to answer. Somebody can give. I will salute them and do their path namaskar. It has, what is the purpose of the organization? Purpose of the any devotee is to realize our innate divinity, to be connected to God, love him more and more, serve our society and community, and be instruments of his love in the divine mission. How is it going to do, if anybody can demonstrate, right now they have been doing so right now, what it is serving is creating more anguish, more pain, more uh, disturbance. And as I said, it is not my decision. That's what people, the old Dr. Reddy is. Let me tell you repeatedly, everybody can testify in the last few months, every week or so we communicate, not just the Prashanti Council World Foundation and Zone Chair, even with central coordinators, deputy central coordinators, officers, because in the central trust, they have only one managing trustee and five trustees. Here, we have so many officers and we have to take their opinion, collective decision, and we cannot ignore that. And this is the unanimous decision of so many people. And Swami says, as a, whenever leader, we need to respect all opinion, I repeatedly emphasize to them, I said, this is a collective decision. This is not a decision of Dr. Reddy, because an organization is not one person. Organization is sacrifice of every devotee, every member of the organization, every officer. So from down to the center to the high level, there is no high or low. We are all in this together. So that let us remember that. That is the Rendra, answer. Yeah, go I ahead. Would like to something. Uh, let me share with all our brothers and sisters. I have spoken with Satyajit, Satyajit, the caretaker of Swami. And he told me that Swami, told him a couple of years before his, he left his physical body that he was going to leave his body. And at that time, he started to prepare everything. And he created, before he was a sole trustee, then he created the managing council for the trust. He appointed members for the, for the managing council. He appointed several committees. But he did not change anything of the Sri Satya International Organization. We didn't need, according to him, any change. Many people think that this all is all a, a problem of egos. As Dr. Reddy said, let me tell you, the Prashanti Council, the Sisata World Foundation, works with complete democracy. Dr. Reddy listens to everybody, and he's not attached, attached to any chair at all. On the contrary, he wanted to live and dedicate his time to, to his own sadhana. We ask him to stay. Some people say, what is the terms for the members? I will tell you. Swami gave the terms for the members of the Sai centers. He gave us how many years they should be, how, when they could be appointed again. He didn't give any term for the sonar chairs or for the members of the Prashanti Council of the World Foundation. Neither he gave any term for the members of the Central Trust because they are also for 10 years or more. So if they ask us, how many years are we here? How many years are they there? It's just because it was Swami's decision. The World Foundation works according to its bylaw. When every person is not able to continue or we evaluate their performance, they can be another person appointed. We follow the bylaws that have been approved by Swami. So I hope that this wrong idea about egos, about holding positions will be erased from your minds and hearts. Thank you. Uh, Alex, may I just add one thing? I, I just want to clarify. Briefly, brother. Thank you. Alex, may I just add one quick uh, correction? 
Uh, I just want to clarify that um, the example I gave of, uh, of Prahalad is not meant to in any way be disparaging on my dearest brothers in the Central Trust. They are not Hiranyakashipu. They are my friends. They are more than friends. They are my brothers. They are Sai brothers. I love them. I respect them. The focus of what I said is on Prahala, the guy whose bhakti was so important that he held on to what he thought was right in the path of God. We may differ. I think it is people can differ. That doesn't make them bad people. All I'm saying is that we are not bad because we are doing something. It's not because of stubbornness. It is our vision of bhakti. It is our way of honoring Swami. I do not make a judgment about that way, but it is a way and I'd like people to understand that. And my dearest brothers from the Central Trust, I pray, I'm sure you'll be watching this, I pray to you as well uh, that let us be loving with each other. Thank you kindly. Thank you, Dr. Venkat. I really appreciate that uh, respectful uh, clarification. Um, okay, so let us now continue with questions. Uh, let me let me jump into a question here um, that I believe, uh, Brother Leonardo, you were referring to the appointments in the SIRE organization. There's there's one question related here to Dr. Reddy, which is, who appoints or appointed Dr. Reddy? Uh, if if that question could be answered, please. So, uh, okay, let me tell you. I I already clearly said. So in 2004, Swami appointed me as a member of the Prashanti Council, and it continued Swami guided. And in 2006, Swami appointed me as the director of the World Foundation. So, and Swami continued to guide us. And after Swami's Mahasamadhi, in 2011, we had the meeting of the board of directors of the World Foundation, and then the board of directors of the World Foundation unanimously appointed me as the chairman of the Prashanti Council. And Dr. Goldstein continued to be the chairman of the Sri Satsai World Foundation. And subsequently in 2012, Gary Bells was appointed as the chairman of the uh, Sri Satsai World Foundation. All these decisions were taken by the unanimous uh, votes or unanimous uh, uh, opinion of all the boards of bo board of directors of the Sri Satsai World Foundation. As I said, Swami said that is the governing body which appoints all officers in the organization, starting from the National Council Zone chairs, everything. So that is how it was appointed, and this was communicated. And the Miss Nomar our communication saying that Sri Satsai Central Trust appointed is completely wrong. So I didn't have. I didn't want to enter into debate or uh, argument that there are our friends, colleagues, Leonardo Gutter, Bill Harvey, and Gary, because all of them can uh, attest to that. Actually, we have a minutes of that meeting of the World Foundation documented in 2011. November 2011, we have the minutes of the meeting of the CSET side, World Foundation documenting this process of the appointment and people congratulating me, Dora, Gary Bells, other people. And this communication also was sent to all the officers. We have documentation of those emails. So it is not in the purview of the Central Trust to appoint any officer, Prashanti Council member or zone chairs, because Swami, that is why clearly gave the guidelines who appoints. Somebody says, oh, uh, Dr. Reddy, he appoints the trust member or the uh, uh, president. Does it sound right? So each one, Swami gave a bylaws and structure on which we are appointed. Any, anybody wants to? Uh, uh, I just want to, I would like to reiterate that you and Dr. Goldstein presented the bylaws of the World Foundation to Swami. He corrected himself and he said, change this because it's not, it's not going to be for some countries. He went through every page of the bylaws that we have now. So please understand this here, brothers and sisters. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ray. Thank you, Leonardo. So it, it, it looks like, you know, attendees and people want to attend, uh, want to understand uh, both sides of the, of the same question, both sides of the coin, I guess. So similarly, uh, would you be able to elaborate or do you know, in, in the case of the Sri Satya Sai Central Trust, 
who makes uh, those appointments in key positions, uh, for example, managing, trust, managing trustee and other. May, may I uh, address that? Alex? Okay. Um, I, I, I mean, in terms of uh, who makes the appointments in the central trust or for how long the appointments are, I, I really don't know. Perhaps that question should be directed to the central trust. But I, I do know as far to the best of my knowledge, um, there was no position of managing trustee. That position didn't exist during Swami's uh, physical presence. Uh, thereafter, um, at some point in time, several years later, uh, the I don't know the exact year. Um, I, mean, I think only the, recently, I think not, uh, it, it was not there the first uh, till 2020. I think the position was created uh, subsequently and I don't know the process, who elects and who selects and yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so somewhere around that time, the position of managing trustee came. But with due respect, Brother Ratnakar was appointed by Swami as a member of the trust, the central trust. Uh, we are all good people. Again, I'll end by saying each question that, that we are all good people. We are all people Swami had confidence in. It is not a question of on this side, there are three people Swami had confidence, that side there are two people Swami. It's not that, it's not a soccer game. It is our life. It is Swami's message. So again, I implore, let's view the answer, each answer with love. No, no, that is important. Uh... Managing trust is probably the bank that uh, doesn't do it. Here, Mr. Ratnakar was appointed along with the other trustees like uh, Indulal Shah, Justice Bhagavati, and Giri to the central trust in 2000, uh, after 2009. So I don't know, 2010. So he has been the trust member, somebody how long? He has been the central trust member for the last 11 years, since 2010. Till now, and I don't know what the term is, how long he will continue to be the central trust member. So he was up, uh, he has been continuing to be there. As he said, managing trustee term, only they sh you should uh, check with them how it works there by law. So we don't have something which don't have answers, that question should be answered by them. So is managing trustee position? Yes, it was not there when Swami was there, and even after Swami left his uh, body till recently. So that is left to their judgment, who appoints, how he's appointed term. Or so that is their business. That is why we said, don't interfere here. That is, they, 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 they go their own bylaws. So we should not dwell on that. That could be addressed to the central trust. Thank you, um, esteemed panelists. Uh, here's a very, very important question that uh, we have been receiving, not only for this particular uh, meeting, but uh, there's been a lot of discussion and concern about, uh, and I'm glad we we have finally come to to this. Um, are SSIO members able to visit Prashanti Nilayam and the Mahasama? Alex, uh, this is this is a question. I think I've, I've already said that in our presentation just now in terms of the privileges. Uh, they have in all your speeches, uh, both the managing trustee and brother uh, Nagan, and they've already assured that as far as uh, Mahasamadhi Darshan and the rooms are concerned, that will be definitely, will not be discriminated and it will be given to us. They only said that uh, what the performances or special seating privileges, these are, uh, these are things that will be uh, done. But for us, for normal devotee, uh, we will be going whenever we want to go and we will sit wherever we want to sit in the normal public place and have the Darshan and uh, stay there comfortably and come back. So that assurance has been given. So there's no fear for that. Yeah, right. That's what I want to, this is the assurance not given by a person. This is assurance be given by the Lord himself. Swami says, connection with me, connection with Prashanti Alayam is entitled for all devotees as long as they desire. If we stop, that is different. So we are always connected with the Swami. We are always connected with Prashant Nilayam. It is not owned by anybody thinks. Like in any temple, like you go to Tirupati Vankateshwara temple, or you go to Jerusalem, or you go to Vatican, or you go to Mecca, it's for all devotees of God, not only for special uh, members. You cannot have class system in uh, going to uh, temple or relation to God. So every devotee is entitled to visit Prashant Nilayam 
and have Swami's darshan, blessings. So, and we are all entitled to that. So there is nothing anybody that it is, uh, Swami's love is unconditional. So anybody comes in that way, I don't think uh, that won't be right or dharmic. So I think uh, we should all be reassure, reassure and reassure our devotees who are concerned that uh, about Prashant and him, that we are always connected. Thank you. Thank you uh, for your responses. Uh, one, uh, one new question. Uh, several uh, several uh, mentions have been made about funds uh, received from the SSSIO uh, to the Sri Satya Sai Central Trust. Can you explain uh, some of this situation a little bit further? Please? Okay. Swami said when he formed, less things you talk about money is better. That's what when he formed the guidelines. And in the beginning, you can go and refer to the talks he gave for the All India Conference in 1967, or whether it is uh, 1968, May 17th World Conference, or subsequently addressed overseas devotees many times, probably Dr. Harvey attended many, he was there, he was very particular about that. Two things Swami was very particular, irrespective of any country. Number one, gender separation, men and women. For a spiritual person, gender separation is important. Number two, he said, have as little to do with money as possible, no solicitation of funds. But let us be practical. Whenever there is a project needed, we all need money to support. But the difference is it should come from source the, because of the devotees, because they're allowed to be serving the Swami and the organization or the, or the uh, community, they give the funds. So over course of time, let me make it for clarity, overseas devotees are so loving and generous because they loved Swami. For the record, I would say, some of them are solely 100% sponsored by the overseas devotees. Say the pl planetarium project in Prashant, let me go and see. Chaitanya Jyoti uh, Museum, you see. Mirpuri College of Music. Are you the sports stadium? are some of the administrative building and some of the college in Whitefield that is called L.C. Cohen uh, section. And so, uh, so many go on and on and some of the units in the hospital, like the orthopedic and GI unit and some parts of the uh, buildings for the re re residences which we have in the ashram. So many projects over time, they're solely supported by the overseas devotees because of their love for Swami, not to show uh, that actually Swami wanted to put the names of some of these uh, overseas devotees who donated. And uh, uh, actually, uh, so we, some of us, we said, they had no Swami, you are the source of all the funds, so you give. So as far as supporting, we did. Now, Prashanti, this is Satsai Central Trust, so it needs money for running the institutes. And Swami provided my institutes will run for thousands of years. He gave the assurance we should have that. And they have right now 1,400 crores, 1,400 crores in their Carpus Fund, in addition to the assets. That is about $200 million in their Carpus Fund. And a lot of it, actually, some of the people in the Central uh, Trust, young men who have worked there, about more, lots of that has come, the corpus fund, the sources came from the overseas devotees. And each year, last year itself, you can go to the Central Trust report, $10 million surplus. They had 250 crores income and 175 expense. $10 million, 75 crores went into the surplus fund. So over this, we have evidence. If you want, we can sub publish or supply information anybody wants. In the last 20 years, because before that, there are leaders have changed. We have our accounting department has provided just today. $28 million was sent from USA itself in the last 20 years. Yes, after Swami's Mahasamadhi, you know, for many reasons, the funds have gone down. But even in the last 10 years, from USA, Australia, UK combined, there were about $5.9 million sent between all these countries. And now there are many devotees 
And many people all over, they have their own trust. Or they form their own foundation. Even in America, we have Prashanti Trust and so many other trusts which are formed by various devotees. And it is left to them who are we to tell. And they directly give the funds to the uh, central trust. There are many people. And also, whenever they ask, if you need a tax deduction from something, yes, you can give it to the uh, Society of America. But if you want, no need to, for any charitable deduction. You can directly give to the Prashanti and LAM Central Trust. We don't need to do. So we don't keep track of who gives how much because our duty is not focused on money to support the various good projects. So we have been, and particularly I can assure you with all the documentation, anyone says they will give you 30,000, 100,000. This is for the Central Trust. We honor it right away. As, as recently as two weeks ago, one lady devotee from California said she wanted $30,000 for a school in uh, Hyderabad, and she wanted to go to Central. Right away, we white transfer 30000 Another devotee had matching funds. They wanted to go 50000 We sent this is a few weeks ago. And same thing last year. So anytime any funds are really meant for Central Trust, we do that. So in all this time we do this, and brothers and sisters, we have so many projects around the world. Like in uh, people in Africa, they can attest recently with some, some uh, help their hunger relief. Still so much hunger, so much need. And the schools in Africa, some of them, because of lack of funds, they're about to close. Same thing in Latin America. We need so many projects to be supported. So we supported so many, how, even $1,000 or $100 did any time Central Trust provided if Swami would have been there, he would be happy whenever there is all of his children, not only India, whether they are Africa, Latin America, there's only one God, all our children. So it should be mutual. We always, what did you do? So what did the Central Trust do? Because we are dependent on Swami's grace and blessings. We are not into equating with money. And always any of this, anybody wants accounting, these are all uh, 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 review audited by the, we have charter uh, accountants, the, we have be, every year we have been publishing it and they also, we used to publish in the local newspapers, anybody can come and visit those things and they are available, anybody can go because this is uh, uh, approved by the Internal Revenue Service, by law we need to have it accessible. So anybody says, hey, this has happened, what is done, we can substantiate that. But we need to have, when they have $200 million in the corpus, in addition to the assets, $10 million. So if we have a couple of millions in one society, and also we should remember, Swami formed this by himself. In 1969, he formed the Society of America. He appointed Dr. Gisla, and there was Mr. Baskin, and so many people, how to conduct. So these are all accounted over the course of 50 years. And same thing with the World Foundation. These are different purposes, and we respect like World Foundation, all the projects we did, Haiti Relief, we spent almost 800,000. Ecuador, and then uh, what is it in um, uh, Indonesia, whether it's Nepal, Nepal we spent almost half a million dollars. So all these things, people say, uh, devotees say, this is for that purpose, we honor that. Recently, COVID-19 Relief for India, there was overwhelming response, about 300,000 came, Right away, we use these various oxygen supply projects. Everything is documented. If you want, we can clearly show the document. And one thing, let me tell you, none of the officers, none of the directors of the World Foundation, Society of America, they take $1 in their compensation. Even they don't use the money for phone bills. So they are all completely voluntary. In fact, most of the officers, they themselves contribute to the uh, each uh, charitable organization, varying from 100,000 to a few hundred thousand. We can document that. If you don't want Swami says, let not your left hand know what your right hand does. If you want, somebody wants really questions, I can show you how much we contributed for the divine mission, myself, the family, and so many senior uh, uh, officers of these things, like Mr. Baskin, Gary Bells. We, but we don't need to publicize how much we contribute. But if some donor says, this is to be used, we 100%, we respect that. To settle this kind of doubts in people's mind, that is really very sad that people are putting that swag with conviction and authority, I can say, not one 
dime is misused and always it is accounted. Actually, see Society Society of America, one time they wanted to audit and they, because they, it went beyond the norms. Most of the people, spiritual organization, NGOs, they have overhead 50%, 30% like World Vision. But we have almost zero overhead. We don't see any salaries for the officers, no compensation. So it felt beyond the norms. They had a doubt. Hey, these guys are really genuine or doing something. Once they audited, they were surprised. They never saw any place where officers don't take any salary, no uh, uh, deductions for phone calls or any other uh, things. It is 100%. That is why I tell the uniqueness about such a international organization is funds is if you give $100, $150 goes to the uh, uh, needy people. Not like others where $100 you give, only $30 goes because our services, all our officers, is completely voluntary, like our uh, uh, doctors, our people, they, they give, bring the supplies, they do the services, so everything we try to support. So coming to that, so this is the, hopefully this uh, puts it to rest that whatever we'll still continue to support our people, it's not only giving money, we give the medical supplies, which uh, last uh, uh, 20 years has been worth a couple of million dollars. So this is all given by the various companies and we have it sent to Swami's institution because of our love for Swami, not that we want to talk about it. Narendra, can okay. I add something? Yeah, there please go ahead. Please go ahead. Just a question in the chat that they said if we join the Global Council, perhaps they could help us to revive the side schools, Satya side schools. Let me tell you, as Dr. Reddy said, in all these years, our, we followed Swami's example. Swami always said, my hand is there to give, never to receive. We always gave, we never received something. And we were, we're not going to change that. And we're not going to betray the divine command for money. If the Central Trust wants to help us, the help will be welcome, but we will not betray the divine instructions just to have receive money for the schools. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Brother Leonardo. Uh, with uh, with y'all's uh, permission, uh, I would like to, this was an important topic, but we have several other topics to address. Uh, so if we could kindly uh, address the next question. Um, let's see, people associate the SSSIO with Dr. Reddy. Uh, but there are so many more committees and processes involved in decision making. Can you please share more information on how the SSSIO, the Prashanti Council, or the World Foundation and, and the World Foundation work? Okay, let me answer, and then probably Dr. Harvey and uh, Leonardo can supplement. As you know, the Satsai and Prashanti Council, the members are from different countries, different continents, always they try to, because the chairman is from uh, USA, California, they are pinpoint, oh, the California, California's headquarters. We said our headquarters is Prashant and Liam. But Swami himself, this is not we, we showed the bylaws and Swami, we showed the headquarters office. Swami decides that, who are we to change what Swami gave? Swami said, don't put the, uh, put the office in Milan or in Buenos Aires. He said, he showed, saw the document, he know where the head office is. And the members are not just from here. Uh, Leonardo Guter, he's from Argentina, Buenos Aires. Marion Meyer, she is from Denmark. And um, uh, Artan Gimsai from uh, Thailand, H.D. Dora from uh, India. So we have people, representatives from all over the world, not just uh, only one place. So the, that is not the completely uh, wrong to say that the and even the committees, you can go the chairs of the committees. They are not from here. The education committee chair is Marian Myers from Denmark and Paul Dahl from Australia. And Angerdahl committee uh, head is uh, David from uh, UK. And uh, so different people from anything or uh, committees like uh, the scriptural studies committee now is uh, Suresh and the environmental committee is uh, like from Hong Kong, so, so yeah, we select people from all over the world and anybody willing to serve, let me tell you brothers and sisters, everybody want position, but people who are committed and want to serve, it is not many. So that is why we need to struggle. Hey, can you join? We all, every time we beg, hey, can somebody, we need help for the IT committee. We need help for the media committee. But all these committees and the chairs are from different parts of the world and they are, 
uh, done with the consensus of the um, opinions from the various members of the Prashanti Council, World Foundation, Zone Chairs, input is taken from different people because we don't know every corner of the world who is talented, who is committed. So we take the committees. So that is a very important. All these committees, it is not one head. They, all these committees have different people. And you can go to the website. You go to suchside.org. It shows who are the various committee chairs, committee members, and some people, they're very difficult to get. So even some of the committee members, we have some committees where we have 10 members, only three or four people continuously work. I said, we need more people, people who are dedicated and working. It is not easy. So if anybody can supply, we'll be happy as long as a lot of our people, let me tell you, they do Shivaratri nights. They work day and night, particularly when the annual report has to be done or when we have any online programs for the Akhanda Gayatri or Guru Purnima or Buddha Purnima, they work hard. And if anybody wants to come in and pitch in, we'll be very happy. We welcome. So it is not monopoly of anybody to be able to serve Swami. It is open to for all. And Narendra, can I add something? Please go ahead. Yes, the Prashanti Council of the World Foundation meet twice every day, several hours. Sometimes we finish 3 a.m. my time. And not only that, every day means from Monday through Monday. There is no Saturday, no Sunday. Second, there is no micromanagement. We don't intervene in what happens in one country. There is a structure given by Swami. There is a National Council president, the centers, the regional presidents, national council presidents, central coordinator, deputy central coordinator, the sonar chairs. So they work by themselves. And there is no more democratic entity that I have ever seen than the Prashanti Council and the World Foundation, where everything can speak and the decision is taken by the majority of the opinions. Yeah, that's a very important point. That is why some of the officers who saw the uh, terms of reference from uh, the uh, central trust, they were concerned. They said, oh, they are telling us, our, uh, managing our trust. Till now, there is a trust in Australia. I don't know. They, I, we trust those people, that country people, they manage their board of directors, how they run. Same thing, the school, whether it is in Brazil or whether it is uh, uh, in um, uh, Australia, they have their own, I don't say, how do you run? That is the education community takes care. So everything, we don't believe in micromanagement. We believe in decentralization and empowerment. That is what it is. Whereas we want to have unity and diversity, not try to uh, control everything and micromanage. Then the people feel empowered. They want to work or want to work. Dr. Reddy, uh, th thank you. Uh, I think that there's a question that uh, relates uh, pretty much squarely with, uh, with uh, this, this topic. Uh, and has, has been a, an, an intense issue of discussion uh, uh, regarding this Global Council matter. And the question is, why is there so much emphasis on who has control, whether it's the SSSIO or the Sri Satyasai uh, Global Council or Sri Satyasai Central Trust? Uh, it says, how is Swami's work that is done mostly by volunteers at the center level impacted in any way? Is there it's a compounded question. Is there any spiritual reason for not being part of the CSATSI Global Council? So we do not, as we mentioned before, we can all work. I don't see any reason why you need to join. We can continue to do our center activities as we are doing before. We are doing what is the purpose to do the devotional program, and study circles or uh, service activities, we'll continue to do that. Why do you want to do something different unless it is going to improve what you are doing? So what is the purpose of You need to have a logic behind that. As I said, it is goes, if at all anything it will do is it will go against what Swami said. And when Swami said we are following and doing it, and how is it going to serve you better? So that is why that decision had to be uh, made. So anybody, Bill, or anybody you want to add? Yeah, or... I, would like, I would like to add something. Yeah, and Bill also wants to say, go ahead, yeah. The question should be asked to the Central Trust, why do they want to have control over us? The, Swami left us a procedure, a way of functioning. He left us the way how we select our offices. Why do they want to have control of our key officers, 
Why do they want control if we can have unity cooperation as we always have? Suddenly they refuse our terms of reference because we didn't put there the authority and the supervision they wanted to have. We don't supervise them. If we are equals, we would have the same right to tell them, okay, we will supervise you as well. We'll appoint the members of the central trust. Swami left us completely independent, one body from the other, one organization from the other. So please ask these questions to, to the central trust. Why they rejected the unity we are going to achieve just because they wanted to have control and power over us? Bill, you wanted to say something. Ah, okay. <laughs> I think uh, all of this conversation is um, worthwhile, but some of it, um, I wonder about whether or not we should be harping on it. Uh, there's some fundamental things here, some really fundamental things that every devotee understands deep in his or her heart. It's Swami told us, never get rid of common sense. Now, one of the first things that we ought to remember is that we can't, uh, you know, Swami, Swami said this himself. He says, you can wake up people who are, are, are asleep in various versions, but the one person you can't awaken is the person who is pretending to be asleep because that person will never wake up. Uh, and a lot of the questions that we are dealing with, anyone can come up with and make an outrageous accusation. They can, they can challenge the integrity or the character of, of a saint. And if the saint uh, uh, chooses to try to relate to that, what she does is to dignify that outrageous uh, accusation by even considering it. So that's one of the reasons that uh, they maintain silence a lot of the time. And Swami has kind of instructed us to not speak more than we, we need to. Uh, I think that from the very beginning, we have to keep in mind that Swami is, is universal, the universality of, of, of the avatar. He did not come only for India. He came for the entire world. He said he would uh, deal with reestablishing Dharma on, on a firm footing all over the world. He would begin with India, but he wouldn't limit it to there. And that he, in, in what you've heard today, is several times in 87 and, and 2004, et cetera, in all those years, he took steps to make sure that there was a separation of the governance between what was going on inside of India and what was going on in the rest of the world. And in the rest of the world, as has been brought out here by some of the responses, uh, a lot of attention has to be paid to the individual countries, to their rules and regulations, to their bylaws and things like that. You have to work with and under the uh, auspices of the government and that kind of thing. So there, the, the key point for us ordinary devotees who are trying to follow Swami's teachings and trying to follow our hearts is to remember that we are doing what he has told us. And when someone, it, it, it is surprising, people get surprised that how can it be that the leaders are not unified or there's some disharmony and that's that's sort of shocking but we shouldn't be shocked like that we know that maya is very strong it's very strong it was strong with the disciples of jesus it's 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 been strong all down through history and we have to keep fighting to overcome that we have to keep remembering the lord think of the lord think of the lord think of the lord we have to keep doing that and when someone comes and says I want to sell you something. You have to wonder why. Why do we? Why do they bring us this whole notion of the global council? You think about it, and I'm sure you'll come up with the right example, the right understanding of why they want to have a superstructure over the international organization. When Swami said, "We do not need to have that. You should not have that. Not only do you not need it, you should not have it. You should 
go along in a parallel fashion. You should cooperate with the Indian organization. You should support to the extent possible, but you should focus on looking at what he is doing all over the world. There's need everywhere. And so this is what we're, we're, we're about. So you'll, you'll never satisfy 100% of people. There'll always be some people who will doubt. And it, it, it makes you look kind of silly trying to convince them. The thing is that we know in our hearts and you who are listening today all over the world, you know in your heart. And if you don't yet know, go to your heart, to your conscience, think about it, ask Swami and follow your conscience. That's who, follow the Lord, follow the God within you. Don't follow mere human beings. Yeah, that is what, thanks, uh, Bill. So Dr. Harvey advised me a few months ago because I tried to get the opinion from many people and get advice and see, he says, if you go on doing that, he said, you can't satisfy everybody. Always people will be unhappy, some people. But I said, I want consensus. But he says, there is good to get opinion, but don't be swayed by you. each one will give you different advice. And during these few months, brothers, people who don't know, have so many false accusations, allegations, phone calls. If somebody says, oh, how can you sleep? I say, I give it everything to Swami. So and say, some people say, oh, you don't address them back. Let me tell you one thing which Swami taught me. There also I need to follow divine instruction. So it is about 20 years ago or more than that. In, I was in Trai Brindavan in Swami's Bangalore uh, house. And there was a, a bad article written about Swami in India today. And you know many things that babies, a lot of things. God, Avatar himself, they wrote bad things, uh, which is disgust, disgusting. And there was a journalist by name Balu. He, he was standing there. I was standing there. He was very irate. He was, Swami, how can you let this happen? So I want to write a strong rebuttal article, point by point, how they are foolish to write that. I can still, it rings in my ears. Swami said three things. If somebody is in the gutter, don't get into the gutter. You'll get it dirty because... You stay above. Somebody goes low, you go high. Somebody is trying to do all that. Okay, that is that. Second thing Swami said is law of karma inexorable. If they are unnecessarily accusing me or anything, particularly all that, they have to pay for it. So anybody says, so one way, like Shri Baba said, they're doing favor. So anybody, if I don't have a fault, if they're doing, they will take all the negative karma from me. All the good karma will come. So one way that making me progress faster towards the goal. So that is their karma. They will pay. There is the law of karma. Nobody can change. So if they are unnecessarily doing that, they have to pay. First is don't get into the gutter, Swami said. Love. And third, Swami, ultimately, truth prevails. People will ultimately come to know the truth. Now people, Swami, know. These three instructions he gave, I, that is why I said I, everything I don't want to react because Swami told me what to do, whether it is the organization, or how to respond to these various allegations. But every little thing, okay, people say that, who am I? Nothing. And Avatar himself, they, they have accused like Jesus, Swami, and people. I am nothing. So if people do, they enjoy, they have, get happy accusing, faulting false allegations. So I'm adding to that happiness. Let them be happy with that. But uh, so I leave it to Swami. Dr. Dr. Reddy uh, and the esteemed panelists, uh, thank you very much. Dr. Harvey, thank you so much for your words of wisdom. Dr. Reddy, I would like to uh, stop here for a second and do a time check. Uh, we have now hit the two hour mark. We have uh, at least another 15 or 20 questions and counting that are coming through. I wanted to uh, check uh, with you if you would like to continue addressing them or, um, or if you would like to, um, to end the meeting. I, 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 yeah, go ahead, Bill. Yeah, we, we should recognize that some people have questions and they will always have questions. They can send their questions in and we can, we can re re relate to them. Uh, there are a lot of people who tune into this to see what's going on. What is this all about? Why are we in this big deal? And they've been very patient to listen to all of this talk for a couple hours. But as I say, there are, there are folk who will just, you can, you, can, you can be absolutely sure that this is the right thing to do. Everything adds up to it. And then your mind says, yes, but what if? And then it all goes to boom. So you'll never satisfy everybody, every question. 
I suggest that we have talked about this a great deal already. And if uh, people have individual questions they want to uh, continue, write them. I'm sure they'll be responded to completely. But I think we must realize that there are a lot of people who have been waiting for, you know, who came here and who are satisfied and weren't concerned about all this in the first place. Um, over 90% of the people in the international organization have no, no uh, tolerance for this kind of uh, uh, interference. And they want to go on and continue working as they always have worked. So there are a few people who are, well, why is this true? Why shouldn't that be? Well, they will be like that. And we will try to explain it. But we can't stop the show to explain to someone who just can't seem to understand or doesn't want to understand. That's my, my, my feeling from the heart. OK, we respect the elder and uh, the senior member of the Prashanti Council. Uh, he has been there, so I will go along what he, uh, he has. So he's older in age and uh, a lot of experience in the organization. I respect uh, his opinion. Dr. Reddy, with the utmost respect to uh, Dr. Harry and you, uh, in order to uh, close uh, close this meeting, there's a couple more questions, at least from that lot of 20, that, that would be important. Um, okay. Is that okay? okay? Is sure. Just, okay. okay. So anything we are here to satisfy. So just uh, I wanted. So always, as I said, we are here to um, clarify as much as we can. We'll do our best. I think that these questions are important, uh, Dr. Reddy, because they go basically to the crux of the matter, which relates to Swami's, uh, Swami's words, Swami's divine command. And the question goes like this. Swami's words on the organization uh, have evolved over the decades. His last words on the international organization seem to have been on March 2006. Is there a reason why we cannot evolve uh, the guidelines according to the evolving circumstances as long as we maintain the spirit of Swami's teachings. Yes, that is what we are trying to do. That is what, another thing I want to correct is not only 2004 and 2006 till November of 2010, Swami guided. And who said still he continues to guide? That is what all of the senior leaders, they met, it is not just me. So yes, that is why we had a meeting on of the, as I said yesterday, we had a meeting, 107 countries, senior leaders, the NCP, central coordinator, they're all, they, they, everybody is in dweller and they have the same unanimous opinion and came, we will continue to work in the organization the way it is. So they are willing to work and they committed to them. them. So it is not just, so still Swami is continuing to guide and that is the decision, yes. If it is for the good of the organization, we'll do and we agreed for that. Bill, you want to add or Leonardo to that? I think that um, we cannot compromise on principles. When Swami dissolved in 1987 the World Council, it was because the World Council didn't know the reality of each country. The side organization has grown so much. So Swami established that each country should have their own uh, officers. So we cannot compromise on that. We can always, we will adjust. For example, the committees didn't exist till a few years ago. We will evolve as soon as the SAI organization grows, but without compromising the principles of Swami. Tomorrow, one person says, why don't we sit women and men together? We will never do that because Swami said that this, this should not happen in the SAI center. So there are some principles that we cannot compromise. That's why our terms of reference were adjusted as much as possible to the needs of or the, the desires of the central trust. Yeah, as Leonardo said, it's important. We didn't say no to the Global Council. We said yes to Global Council. If we didn't like it, hey, who are you to tell? We should have, would have said no. We said yes to Global Council. But as a consulting body, a coordinating body, and cooperative body. So we said we want, there is a purpose. Why? What, what, what is the purpose of the whole Global Council is? Unity. OK, we want to develop the unity. Let us mutually consult how we can complement each other how we can coordinate, how we can co cooperate. So when they said we are all equals, how do you want to supervising? Okay, if you're supervising, why not do unto others as you would have do unto you? That's what the basic fundamental golden rule is by the Lord Jesus and even Mahabharata says that. Okay, you want to supervise, why can't we do that same thing? 
who is the appointed, who is the vice chancellor appointed, how is the hospital director appointed, how are the trust members? We should have the input. We don't have, uh, we cannot give input in that. So how can it be, be one way? So we are all brothers, like you could take one father and mother is Swami. We are all three brothers. So one brother suddenly says, hey, we are all good, but why can't I tell you what to do? Will, will it be acceptable? So we need to have clarity. We are willing to work together, we said, as thing, but don't try to dictate terms what to be done. That's the whole thing. We work, what is the purpose of the organization? I said, to spread Swami's message and do service. And as Dr. Suresh Govind clearly said, that is the emphasis we gave. Emphasis should be a divine mission, not to disturb the structure which Swami gave. As long as focus is on the mission to do more service project, to do more uh, spreading the Swami's message, translate Swami's teachings in different languages, to spread it around the world to meetings, we are willing to do that. Even we clearly mentioned that there is a term of reference which Suresh Govind uh, has shown. And there are many senior officers said, you also look at it. What is, what is wrong in this document? Tell, how doesn't it help in the divine mission? Go to the term of references, which were done by the SSIO, which is focuses on the divine mission and spreading his message, doing the surveys and focusing on mutual cooperation. That is the focus, not uh, how one is over the other. You want to add anything there, Suresh? No? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ray. I think you addressed the second question, yep. uh, which, which had come, especially in the current circumstances and going forward. What is the vision and the mission of the SSIO, which I believe you've addressed, but I don't know if you'd like to expand on that. As, as yeah, as I think but that is why, brothers and sisters, please, if we want to know very clarity, is all the answers are there in Swami's divine teachings. Starting, just go back, that's why it's some important landmark discourses of Swami regarding the organization we put in things called divine nectar, because Swami's teachings are divine nectar. There we mentioned what is the vision, what is the mission of Swami, given by Swami himself, not by me or anybody. And as I said, this has been nurtured by Swami, and there are so many wonderful leaders who dedicated. So says, what is the mission of uh, such an organization? To realize our divinity and help others. Hey guys, anything, is it helping you? It doesn't matter, so it is one's own uh, sadhana. What is the, that is the completely Swami says, that is the purpose of the organization. How do you do that? Through two things, love and service. That means we develop intense, more and more love to God. So that means focus on our inner sadhana, namasmarana, our contemplation, as I said, our reading his uh, leelas. So this will make us be in touch with God. So try to do that more and more. And also love our fellow beings. Let it be our other human beings and love uh, animals. That's why we are taking these things. It's not only human, animal, and even plants, environment. That's why we have Go Green Initiative. So our love should be extending not only to our fellow brothers and sisters. And first point, as uh, some one of our brothers said, hate none. So even though we may disagree with what Central Trust or some, we have no ill will or hate at all. This fundamental first thing, quality of a devotee, advesta sarva bhutanam hatred towards none, not only human beings, animals, anything. So first we need to say, am I a devotee? First thing is, do I have hatred to anybody? That means you disqualify that minute of being a devotee. That means you are hating, writing nasty emails, accusing somebody. That means we don't deserve to be called. You may be a devotee called 40 years, or maybe officer in this thing, you may give so much money, do service. We disqualify the minute we have hatred towards anything. Fundamental thing is, Swami says, God is love, love is God, live in love. So we need to practice that thing. If you don't practice, all our things is waste. It's better to not belong. It's not taking us towards the goal. So love. Second is service. So that love is in action service. How can we do more and more service? That is what our organization is focusing on. And also always actions speak louder than words. If you get more involved in loving God, loving our fellow beings, and doing service to more and more people, automatically people will see that. So let there be global council, let them do their work. We are not saying, we are not denouncing it. Let's let them work, people who want to join that, let them join and also God bless everybody, whoever they think it is good, let. And we people who want to follow Swami's instructions, 
Swami's guidelines. We will follow and time will tell. Value, who is following God, who is following man. You follow God and what he gave and see time will tell. Your good works will talk more louder than all the words you say. So that is our vision and mission to realize our divinity for that use love and service as effective, which we have been doing, but we will intensify that. There is no to, uh, limit for that. Very happy. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Well, really, uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for closing the meeting in such fashion. Uh, at this point in time, uh, we will follow, again, our seniors' advice, and we will uh, go ahead and close this meeting. I would like to share with everybody, as I mentioned earlier, that we have had uh, many more questions that have come in. Uh, we'll have to count them at the end of this meeting, and clearly, uh, even with more time, we may not have, not have been able to address all of them. But please do rest assured that all the questions that have been submitted uh, will be uh, handed over to the Prashanti Council and here are panelists, and uh, they will uh, let us know how, uh, in what fashion, these can be addressed. At this point in time, I would like to uh, start bringing this meeting to a close. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to once again uh, thank our most beloved and beautiful Swami for being our every thought, word, and deed, for guiding this meeting, and for answering as many questions as possible and continuing guiding the divine mission worldwide. Um, I would like to thank each and every one of you, Dr. Narendranath Reddy, uh, Brother Leonardo, uh, Dr. Harvey, Brother Suresh Govind, uh, Dr. Anupam and Dr. Venkat Sadhanan, and absolutely everybody else who joined two hours or more than two hours of your Sunday or perhaps even Monday, depending on where in the world you are, uh, in, in helping us all understand and gain more clarity about this issue regarding the Global Council. Uh, Alex, I want to say one word. First, I want to express my gratitude to Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba for his presence and his guidance during these meetings. So really, uh, we are grateful to his love and grace and uh, guidance. And also I want to thank other, my fellow brothers for their wonderful wise words. And also every participant in this meeting and who are, whoever is going to watch. So this is nothing but, I want to assure you, this is as per Swami, and we are particular about sticking to truth and dharma, we will follow it. So as I said, Swami says, if you follow truth and dharma, not a hair of your body will be touched. People will accuse you. There are people, blessed are those, Jesus said, who are persecuted for my sake. Theirs is the kingdom. So if people persecute you, torture you, write bad things, that is their thing. So we proceed, as long as our conscience says we proceed in the right direction, it is good. I really, so many wonderful people, I said there are people who accuse at the same time, so many brothers and sisters and uh, friends who wrote such a loving letters and mails touching my heart, supporting, we are with you, we are praying, and Swami's love is with you. That really touched. So always in a family, some people like you, some don't like, but we love all. We, we love all and send love to every one of you, but especially those who send their love, I am very grateful to them. So. Uh, we appreciate that. So please go ahead and close the meeting, Alex. Thank you, Dr. Reddy. And uh, once again, the, with gratitude and, and all our love to Swami, we bring this uh, meeting to a close. Could I please call on Brother Srikant once again to lead us into closing prayers? Om Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Samasta Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samasta Loka Sukino Bhavantu Samasta Loka Sukino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Hi Say Sarah.